Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. My name is Sean Walsh, founder of Cali BBQ and Cali BBQ Media in life, in the restaurant business, and in the new creator economy. We learn through lessons and stories. We are grateful to Toast, our primary technology partner, not only at our restaurants, but for so many restaurants in the United States for believing in the power of storytelling, for helping us with our digital hospitality in our restaurants, and for giving us the opportunity to have conversations like the ones that we're gonna have today. Uh, sometimes I have to pinch myself because because of this show, I get to meet the biggest rock stars in hospitality and storytelling, and I get to share their stories with you, the listener. So thank you guys for being on the show. Today, we are gonna welcome Chef Enrique Limbardo and Ezekiel vazquez Guerre. They are both with the Seven Reasons Group out of Washington, D.C., rock stars in their own right. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sean. Happy to be here. Seriously grateful to have you. So you can find them at Seven Reasons DC. Uh, you can find both of them on Instagram, which I'm very excited to talk about because very infrequently do leaders of this caliber post content like these two gentlemen. But uh, we're going to get into their storytelling, um, why they do what they do, why they've built what they've built. But first, I'm going to start with... Uh, a quote in their 40 under 40. So there was a quote from the Washington Post. They made the top 40 leaders under 40. And it's Ezekiel Vazquez Guerra, a native of Argentina, co-founded Seven Reasons Group in 2019 with 5 million raised, but no restaurant experience to his name. Today, the former political consultant and economist in concert with co-founder chef Enrique Limbardo have built a celebrated group of restaurants and bars from Michelin star and repeatedly awarded seven rooms to imperfect, imperfecto, serving the likes of Joe Biden, U2's Bono, and Supreme Court Justice Ketanje Brown Jackson and generating $13.2 million in revenue in 2022. Imagine what they're gonna do in 2023. Gentlemen, tell me, uh, let's start with the favorite random question. Where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? So I'm originally from Argentina. I, I, I grew up there. I moved to the U.S. 13 years ago. But growing up, I went to every single River Plate game uh, from the age I was, I think, 13, 14, until the day I, I, I left the country. And every time I go back, uh, I have my seats at the stadium, and I, I cannot miss a game. So really? my, my favorite stadium is definitely the Monumental, the most beautiful and, 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 and bigger stadium in Latin America. We just went through a, through a huge renovation. It, it's a spectacular place. <laughs> how, how many does it seat? How many fans? Around 80, 86,000. 86,000. Well, since you spoke first, we're going to go to Argentina. Plus, I have a, a huge, huge place in my heart, not only for Argentina, but also Venezuela. But I'll explain that later. Um, we're going to go to Argentina. And we're going to talk to Entrepreneur. We're going to talk to Toast, talk to some of the biggest hospitality brands. But one of the cool things about doing this show is I get to talk to people all over the globe that believe in the game within the game of hospitality. It's one thing to build a restaurant. It's another thing to build a community. It's another thing to tell a story. I'm going to put you both on center pitch and say, how did you meet and what is seven reasons? Well, the, the way that we met uh, was because I started in, in Baltimore. I arrived to United States about 10 years ago. And I started running a restaurant uh, in Baltimore called Alma at that moment. And Ezekiel started came into the restaurant. And one night he approached me like, hey, the chef can come out and I would uh, love to talk to him, you know. And we started talking and he asked me like, why you are not in Washington, D.C.? I said, I don't know, man. I don't have the money. I just here in Baltimore, I just left my country. I left everything behind. So if you have the money, we can do it. But you know, in my experience, probably more than 25 uh, years in this, uh, you know, in this industry, you, you, you heard that a lot, you know, people sure. that approach you, you know, try to, because that's a, a common dream to have a restaurant. So I left the conversation that, and like one week or two weeks after, he called me and he said me like, can you come down to the sea? The, we can talk more about it. I said, well, probably these guys like going serious. 
let's do it. We sit in a cafe and this crazy guy approached me like, <laughs> you know, we are going to open the restaurant here in DC. I don't care. I don't want to go any more times to Baltimore. I don't want to spend time <laughs> going to Baltimore. I love your food. I'm going to let behind everything I have been doing uh, and we are going to open the restaurant. I said, okay, this guy is crazy enough. So I will do that. <laughs> I will do it. And that is the funny story about it, how we met each other. And, and then, you know, everything, he's, he's, very, he's very sharp, smart, uh, like he never stopped. Um, I'm also a workaholic. And he's, you know, always pushing for new ideas, new ideas. So he pushed me always to go further. And when we start the project, uh, we will look him for a location, that kind of thing. So he, he, he did a really good uh, job about researching in DC. I think you visit like 140 restaurants uh, just to know better, you know, the size of the restaurants, amount of items, how many seats, uh, hourly, uh, they operate. So we started discussing and I, and I said, okay, this is a good job. So we, we, we can create a restaurant that should be successful from day one. That is very difficult. Um, and then I started discussing, you know, names and that. And, um, particularly, uh, I am a very mystic person. Sometimes I believe in magic. You know, I'm a really uh, strange. Uh, I believe in ovnis, you know, the kind of bullshit. <laughs> uh, and for me, the number seven is so strong in, in whatever sense that means. In every culture, the seven is, is the number of the seeker, uh, is a person that always is looking for more. And uh, we say, okay, we are agree on seven, but we cannot call the, re the, 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 the restaurant like just seven. Uh, and then I realized, okay, why well, everybody goes to a restaurant for a reason. So why don't call it seven reasons? At that point, we create our own reasons, and then we create like a speech between us and the customers. Uh, we have our own, and the customers, they will have their own. Yes. And then we start that conversation, and that's how seven reasons came up. Ezekiel given your background as a political consultant an economist a writer why would you be crazy enough to get into this crazy business so when when i will say that when when i was working as a political consultant my job was to fix other people's problems at one point <laughs> okay I that's fair enough other people's problems and getting getting the middle of problems that were not mine you so picked the perfect okay, business. Where, <laughs> you have plenty of problems. What is this business where I'm going to have the most problems? I love fixing problems. I cannot live without problems. No, this is real. Every time like we have a problem and everyone is freaking out, sometimes I freak out too. But there's nothing that satisfies me more than fixing a problem. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons. Uh, but honestly, the, the, the main reason is when, when I tried Enrique's food and I, 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 I saw his talent, uh, I mean, I, I knew that doing a re opening a restaurant with him was going to be a success. Was, I mean, you know, food is not the only variable. A, a lot of things has to be in place. Uh, the experience has to be amazing. Uh, and the business side, the, the numbers have to be good. But, but being the food, the starting point, I knew that it was really difficult to fail when, when he was the one uh, putting his inspiration and his, his creativity uh, behind the dish. It's one thing to try someone's food, uh, an incredible chef. It's another thing to meet the man. What were the things that you were looking for in the man and the business partner? I think that, I mean, the, the thing that made us successful so far is that Don't I know. Me on the <laughs> boss, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. I know nothing about food, but I know when I eat something, if I like it and if it's good. Uh, and I know that whatever he cooks and puts in a plate is going to be, people are going to like it. Enrique knows absolutely nothing about numbers, but he knows that the paycheck every month, every quarter is pretty good. So yeah. it's, a, it's like a blind trust. You know, I trust what he does. He trusts what I do. Uh, he knows where we are and I know what he's doing. But, but it, I think it's a great combination of the business aspect and the, and the culinary aspect. It's just a, a great match. One of the themes of the show is that we're 
we're bigger than a restaurant. You know, anyone that's listening to this, if you're a single unit restaurant owner, if you're a multi-unit restaurant owner, if you're in the restaurant business, it's it's so much more than just taking care of our village, taking care of our community. When you started this idea, it sounded like it was more than one restaurant that you wanted to build. We, I, I, I don't, I mean, we didn't know. You didn't I mean, know. of course, idea. I mean, I, we, I, I personally wanted to start a business, create a business, and grow a business. But I, I never, I never knew what exact way, exact path that was uh, we were gonna take. Um, but yeah, given the success of certain reasons, and then you know the, the way we navigated the pandemic, it, it was evident that that one was not enough. That we wanted more. Uh, and this is something also I, I, I can't stop. You know. I don't know if I'm going to be in this industry forever. If at some point I, I might do some other things, but I know I'm never going to stop. And if there are no other things, I, I'm going to continue. We're going to continue opening restaurants. I, at some point, we're probably going to leave DC. Uh, I, I guess the, the the vision, I think, it's always been the same: creating great culinary experience, different experience, experience that differentiate uh, from whatever <coughs> offering there is out there, uh, and that we add value to the guests. The, the exact path might change through time. Uh, honestly, although I, I think I, I knew we were going to open more, I never thought we were going to open five in five yeah. years, six in five years, you know, in four years. Uh, the, the last couple of years, they've been, the, I mean, they've been crazy. And, and the process we're going now, too, we're going to open one, the, the, the sixth one in, in, in a month and a half. And, the, and we're going to move the first one to a new location. Uh, by the end of the year. So it, it, it's a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it. Can you talk by about the one? You, you, you want to reopen the seven reasons overnight. Like overnight, said, overnight. So seven reasons, we're going to close it <laughs> one night, and we're going to open it in a new location the following night. And we're not going to tell anyone <laughs> when that's going to happen. We're going to realize it that morning. <laughs> can you can you tell me about seven reasons, the the original restaurant, the the first one? Because you know, we've we've had this interview scheduled for a while now, and I've been, you know, doing my due diligence, learning about it. And from what I've read, it seems like you were ready to put it to to bed, you know, to retire seven reasons. Is that correct? No, no, no. no so no. so it was never it was never gonna close permanently. No, no, it was never, just the location. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're moving locations. Okay. Uh I don't know when this is gonna be actually released, but people <laughs> already know and, and we're actually gonna announce it in the in the in the in the next few days. Um, How are you going to announce it? We're, we're going to have a press article with a, with a media Perfect. outlet, and, and we're going to put up the banners in the new location where we're already starting the build out. Uh, oh, you like no spies? I, I, I like mystery. I like intrigue. Mystery and intrigue. I like people <laughs> wondering what's going on. So we, we decided to create this, this campaign called The Last Dance. And, and the, the campaign was basically uh, seven reasons the way you know it now is going to close its doors by the end of the year. So come back to some reasons one last time. Let's dance together. Let's have fun. Uh, we brought all the best dishes from the last four years to the menu. Uh, but yeah, we, we never intended to say that we were going to permanently close. Uh, we're just moving locations. Okay. Uh, Chef Enrique, I, I would love for you to talk, if you're willing to, about the hardship, the hardship of, of leaving your country. You know, it's easy for people to watch the show, to see you on Entrepreneur, Michelin Star, all these amazing restaurants, and not know the struggle that you went through to get to where you are. Yeah, it was, it was a, a very tough path, I would say, because in my country, I used to be like, you know, people, people know me, so, but, you know, the political situation, economic situation in that country. Suddenly, my just next door neighbor was killed in, in my door because uh, they, they robbed him and they killed him. So I said at that moment that I need to leave. I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm just going to leave. I left behind my family. I came to the United States, as I said, like 10 years ago. Uh, with a dream, like try to do something with my skills. If not, uh, probably I do plumbing, I don't know, in constructions, whatever. Uh, but always I keep attached to my path because it's my, it's my, you know, my, my strength and everything. And at the beginning, uh, was very difficult because I was trying to get a visa, a special visa because a talent visa, that is the old one. 
uh, but that didn't came out well. So I, I, I spent like six months uh, working for someone like was like a little scam. So I spent six months living in a in a basement, working 18 hours a day, you know, like crazy things. Uh, I, I mean, was super tough alone without no, knowing anybody. Um, but suddenly, you know, life gives you opportunities and chances are like odd. Um, one woman was in Venezuela looking for a chef because she wants to open a Latin restaurant in the United States. And she was eating in a restaurant that the owner and the chef, it, it, it was a friend of mine. And when she approached him, uh, he said, hey, but you have the best of the best you have it just right next door because you are from Baltimore. He's now, well, I was in South Washington, whatever. And we start connecting and, um, wow. and you know, we start from the scratch, everything, design, name, all, all in that restaurant and was very successful for several years. We, uh, I, I'm very blessed. And for me, it was like a very huge trampoline in this country. Uh, and suddenly, you know, I spoke in with lawyers and all of that. I, I got my, my own one, my own one visa and, and now I have my permanent resident. So, but, you know, it's tough, but I, I always, uh, if I have to say an advice to everybody that is going to migrate to another country, you have to adapt, you have to have the resilience spirit inside of you and you have to keep uh whatever you know keep to that path you should not change it because when you change it you start losing even if the wall is it seems like indestructible you have to be like water you know drop by drop it's going to open a hole in a rock so but you have to believe in yourself and you have to go straight forward no matter what with your talent and where where, where the shit you know are you a man of faith or a man of magic? Wow, it's a combination, but I don't trust on Loki. You know, Loki for no. me doesn't exist. For me, no. Loki is a combination of two different paths, preparation and opportunity. So for me, it's like that. Huge news, Toast, our primary technology partner at our barbecue restaurants in San Diego and the primary technology partner of so many of the guests that we have on this show have announced they are expanding their business offerings with Google. So now if you search on Google Maps and you sign up for Toast Tables or Toast Waitlist, you will have the opportunity to improve the digital hospitality experience of the guest, allow them to book through the maps into the Toast Reservation system. One of the biggest difficulties that restaurant guests have is when they search for your restaurant and they want a table, they do not have an easy solution to book a table or to get on a wait list. This is huge news for the restaurant industry, huge news for guests and huge news for you, the restaurant owner. Check out Toast Tables today and find out the new integrated solution that they have. This is something that we've wanted for a long time. How do you integrate reservations, wait lists into your point of sale? Toast has done it. Check it out. Ezekiel. I would love to know more about your background, specifically public relations and how it relates to what you did in the past, in your previous life, and how you continue to tell the story now in the new ventures that you do. How I mix both things. So when I was working as a, as a political consultant uh, or a public affairs consultant, most of what I did was create campaigns for clients uh, through using different resources, you know, from press to connections to 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 government of actors, uh, etc., to pursue a goal, you know. And at the end, when we were meeting someone or, or, or building these campaigns to pursue that goal, what we were doing is telling a story. Uh, I think I, I, I became pretty creative doing that, and and you know, I, I apply that to absolutely everything we do. We're very active in the restaurants. We we don't believe in, in just you know putting out the menu and, and leaving it forever. You know, we, we feel a restaurant has to tell a story and, 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 and find new ways and new channels to tell the story all the time. And that could be through new things in the menu, 
uh, new creations, but also through different events or different kind of experiences. Uh, and I, I, I think like my, my, my public affairs and, and the way I approach, you know, how to communicate with different audiences, uh, the way I did it before, it's similar somehow as the way we, we approach things now. Um, understanding who the customer is or, or what kind of experiences each kind of customer uh, is looking for and how to package and sell that. Yeah. Can you tell me about your your strategy or your reasons behind sharing your story personally on social media? No, I, I don't think I have a strategy there. Uh, I don't know. I always was very open about who I am, who my family is. I have no nothing to hide. Uh, I'm a terrible, as you probably saw, I'm a terrible wake surfer. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love showing how bad I am <laughs> and making fun of myself, but improving too. <laughs> but I think um, that's for anybody that listens to this show, they know how much it means when a leader is willing to show vulnerability. Like I said, it's easy to go on Instagram or Facebook or the internet and see the great sides of business owners and entrepreneurs. But when you show the human side, you know, of you being a dad, you being a husband, you falling down, <laughs> it reminds us that in life we fall in life, we fall down. I mean, it's, it's what I teach my son and my daughter. I have a six-year-old boy and a four-year-old daughter. And I talk to them about the, the Batman principle when he falls down. Why do we fall? We fall so we can learn how to get back up. Exactly. exactly. Uh, uh, the end does has a lot to do. I mean, the reason we call Imperfecto our second restaurant Imperfecto is because our, our philosophy in life is the only way the only way to progress is by making mistakes, learning from the mistakes, and moving forward. You know, we are imperfect as human beings. If we were perfect, there it would be boring. You know, there was there there would be nothing else to learn, nothing else to do. Uh, but that imperfection that means you know the, the, the being imperfect, making mistakes, learning from the mistakes, fixing mistakes. Uh, fixing problems, which I love, and and, 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 con and continuing. Uh, that that I think that's our uh, philosophy that we share and that we 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 we're guided by that in every aspect of our lives, including the business. I think what's really fascinating to me, and I think something that you know the viewers will be able to take away, and anyone that's listening to the show, is when you make this deliberate decision on your brand, you're picking names for your restaurant. That's not just a name as a placeholder, but it's a name as the beginning of a conversation. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And if we, if we have an extra minute, I can, for example, all of our restaurants have, have a story to tell. And each name that came after the previous one has a reason to be. So seven reasons for us is our origin, is where we come from, is Enrique's background and, 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 and you know, training in, in, in Latin American cuisine. Uh, imperfect is our, our 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 human philosophy, our, our human nature. Uh, joy is the reason why we do things, or how we do things. Is the, the joyfulness and and the the, the the happiness with which we 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 work and we do what we do. Saga is the continuation for us. Saga is like the link between the past, the present, and the future. It's Enrique's background and studies in Spain, and how he mixed that with all his. Uh, travels and, and his, his Latin American influence and, and cooking. Quadrant, it's a name we inherited when we took the space, but it had a very powerful meaning because Quadrant for us is the DC Quadrant that is, a, is DC, it's the city that opened the door, doors to us. Yeah. Uh, so uh, as you can see, every restaurant is, is like the next chain in, in, in the story and has a very powerful meaning to us. And, and we try to share this uh, with people too. Chef Enrique, I would love for you to talk about what it meant to get a Michelin star. First ever. Uh, that, that, was, that, that is huge. It's, first, it's, first ever for Venezuela, or second in history for a Venezuelan chef? Yeah. First second. in the United States. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, always, for me always was a dream, you know, because I used to work in Michelin star restaurants in Spain for a long time and always was obsessed with that but so fucking crazy. <laughs> so I think that is a good motivation, but you cannot drive your life just because of it. Yeah. I try to explain that to my cooks, my, my other leaders around me, because it, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, two years ago before we got it, 
Uh, we were almost sure we are going to get it. You are going to get it. Customers say, Enrique, they are going to get it this year. So I started believing it. I never yeah. believed in that before. I started believing it. Ah. And I was completely sure. And when they realized that we don't got it, was I, I was, I cried. I went completely mad, drunk. I was vomiting on the fucking floor. And the next day, I, I just realized... This is stupid. I yeah. mean, I have been working my entire life to deliver something great, you know, and have to be a consequence of it. No matter what, you cannot pursue it that just because you have that star attaching in a wall. Yeah. So the year after that, they gave it to us, and I didn't believe it. Also. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the story. It's crazy. I, I, it I, was crazy. I, I, I had hopes, you know, that we were going to get it. So I came to the restaurant very early. Like verified calls? Like you, you vetted them? <laughs> no, 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 not, not calls. I mean, no, no, no. I, I mean, we, we had no idea, but I had, I, I had a hope that we were going to get it. So I came to the restaurant very early. I opened my computer. I started refreshing. And Google, Michelin, Michelin, Michelin Washington, D.C., refresh, refresh, yeah. refresh. And I did that for four or five hours, you know? But anyway, my fo- that day, <laughs> I decide they are going to release it. I decide to stay in home, you know, lies down, just see a movie. I don't fucking care. Tomorrow is another day. I keep working hard. That's it. So he, uh, out of those days, you know, so I was refreshing, 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 waiting for a call or waiting Enrique to get a call. I, I knew, you know, at, at one point we submitted information that they requested. So they had my phone and Enrique's phone. So I said, well, they're going to call me. If Enrique doesn't pick up, they're going to call me. They never called, or maybe they call Enrique, but he's no, no, sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> he's sleeping. <laughs> he's so watching Netflix. Like <laughs> one one p.m. or two p.m. I get a Google alert, imperfecto, Michelin guy. I'm like, what? They no even call motherfuckers. At least heads up, you know. So I start Google, calling Google's the best. Enrique Google's the best alert for sure. <laughs> you call me. You call me like fifty times. I call like fifty times. He didn't pick up the phone until like four hours later. <laughs> Yeah, it was like, you know, I saw, I started seeing my phone like, voot, voot, voot. I, okay. So suddenly I got, a, you know, like an alert in the phone and Ezekiel told me like, hey, we got it. And I said, this motherfucker is going to play me <laughs> he's, around. He's, he's no, playing no, no, with me. So fucking mad. But then I started scrolling down the phone. I said, Jesus Christ, like a <laughs> hundred messages. I was. Oh, I cried. I just came to the restaurant immediately to celebrate with all the people. You know, it, it was a, like a, an amazing sensation. You know, it, it, it's unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. And I love it. I, I, we achieve it because the team and all the support that is around me. I, I am very pleased and grateful uh, for that. But after that feeling, uh, you realize that it's just the base of the mountain. That's another different feeling also. Because the first feeling is you achieve it. You are in the peak. You are at the top. And then when you start looking around all the details, you realize, oh, shit, this is just the fucking bottom. It's... And now we, start, we have to push harder. We need to start climbing more. And, well, that's, that's another goal. And that's yeah. fine with me. You know, that kind of challenge that is always, okay, pushing to do better. When you think of all of the people that are in maybe a more difficult situation, not just in Latin America, but wherever they are in the world, and you think of the struggles that you went through and the achievement of what you got, what kind of advice, if somebody somehow comes across this show, whether it's on YouTube or Spotify or podcasts, and they're struggling, you know, they're working their ass off, opening you, and closing. You can, never, you can never stop believing. Never. You have to be, you have to have dream, but with goals and you need consistency. You need, you know, that commitment with yourself, no matter what. And if, if I can help, I will. If I can give an advice, always my doors are open. Uh, when we got that mission started, I received like a thousand calls uh, for me, for my, you know, from my country, because that's a, a huge inspiration because sure. my country has been struggling for 20 plus years. Uh, that was very emotional for me, you know, give them like hope and hope that can be done. 
I mean, it, 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 it is. I mean, we, we just got it, so it can yeah. be done. But well, if the path is not easy, you, you have to keep working, and you well, have now. To and now that it has been done, like you said, you're at the bottom. You're at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. No, no. With yeah. the weight of the responsibility, because now there's the expectation. A lot, a lot. <laughs> But I'm fine with that because I love what I do. So for me, it's not like uh, I'm waking up every day because I'm going to my job. For me, it's my style of life. I love what I do and I will do it again and again and again until the eternity. So I don't care. I would love for you guys to talk about the bigger, the bigger goal because it's one thing to run a restaurant to take care of people in real life. So many of the restaurants that we work in, they work with consumer packaged goods, delivery, storytelling, media, all different types of ways to grow revenue streams for your restaurant group. How are you looking big picture besides physically moving outside of Washington, D.C. and opening other locations? Uh, in, in what sense? In what sense is what 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 is the strategy? What What's the what's the longer term? I, mean, I, I think it's really just like st staying true. Uh, Close to, I mean, never forgetting our values, how we got here. Mm -hmm. You know, focusing a lot on on on, on, on quality, um, making sure the business aspect it, it's it's always in in, in good track. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's it's about never losing our north and our north is we're here to offer great food, great service in a great vibrant ambience in every single place and make sure that those three things always remain uh, consistent. Uh, never losing creativity, you know, uh, always, you know, being flexible to, to switch things, to pivot things, to create new things when it's necessary, and always putting, uh, I guess, the client's needs or the client's wants uh, first. Knowing, knowing uh, not necessarily knowing what the client wants and giving the client what he wants, but doing something that we know is going to be appreciated by the people. Uh, sitting at the table. Can you tell us a story about one of the most famous people that have come to dine at your establishments? There's been a few. <laughs> I know. I, give, was give, give me the most memorable story. I, I know. Maybe, maybe when President Biden came, uh, we, I mean, we, we knew that there was a possibility for him to to come, but they didn't confirm until 15 minutes before. And those last 15, <laughs> nice. minutes, those last 15 minutes were crazy. It was like, I mean, first they, they blocked like four blocks around the restaurant, so people couldn't even drive to the restaurant. I think you you were walking. No, no, they didn't allow me to to get into the restaurant because I was at seven reasons, and I got my motorcycle. Okay, when I a uh, cycle called me, hey, Biden is here, so I get the, <laughs> the motorcycle like crazy, and they stopped me four blocks away. I left the motorcycle there, and there there were the you know the the security service. Uh, no, you cannot get in. I mean, it's my restaurant. It's my restaurant. My restaurant. <laughs> and the guy said, no, no, I don't care. You cannot go. No, what, what the fuck are you talking about? I need to be there. So, but then, then well, I, I passed through, I don't know, like 20 secret service until I get to the restaurant. But what's was, was very impressive. Very, very it, impressive. Are, are you allowed to share what you served? Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, they put one of the secret service inside the kitchen and he was like surround me and every single step, everything. He, he followed every single step until they took the plate and put it to him. And did, did he enjoy the meal? Yeah, he so, enjoyed it a lot. So it was funny because at one point I walk into the kitchen and I ask him, are you having the, the you're, you're having the, the night of your life, right? What is great? And he tells me, <laughs> no, I think that, uh, that was a good one. Yeah. Can you tell me uh, what what do you, each of you do personally? Um, you know, one of the things we talk to leaders about, especially in the hospitality space, is our our whole our DNA is to take care of people. We take care of the people that come into our restaurant. We take care of our teams. We take care of our families, everybody else. But very rarely. Do we take care of ourselves as as men as leaders? What do what does each of you do to to take care of yourself, or do you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> Me personally, health wise, I think it's about eating uh, in a balanced way. You know, I and 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 drinking reasonably. Uh, yeah, every day. 
reasonably. <laughs> no, 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 not exceeding. You know, uh, you know, eating three times a a day in a in a in a reasonable way. You know, and having looks with here and there, it's okay. Uh, sports wise, I like everything water related. You know, I I I, I wakeboard, I ski, I wake surf. Uh, I, I love the water. And aside from that, uh, I love soccer, so I watch every single soccer game I can, especially my, my home team, uh, River Plate. And I spend a lot of time playing soccer with my son and taking him to practice like five days a week. Uh, that's awesome. That's, yeah. yeah. No, for me, for me uh, it's always important uh, to take care of my mind because I have a very restless mind. So... One of the things that I do is uh, play music. I like to play guitar and bass guitar. So people don't understand how I have the time to do it, but I sleep very less, you know, just a few hours. But for me, it's the way that I can disconnect myself with the world when I go to, to play music. Another thing that I, that I do uh, is draw or paint. I love that because I have a little background in architecture. I studied architecture also in Venezuela. Um, oh, well, and I spend time with my kids, you know, uh, going to, a, well, going to Ezekiel house and I spend time in the water, or I, I try to eat very healthy because I taste so many different things every day. So I try to be very healthy. I do sometimes workout, um, and that's the way I try to keep uh, that balance. When you when we look back on this this interview here on Entrepreneur 2023, if we're looking five years into the future, how how big is the restaurant group? What cities are you in? What what's the dream? I think uh, I mean our goal right now is to to take one of the concepts that we think is going to be seven reasons and take it to a different city. Uh, we like Miami in the U.S. Uh, we also are looking at some uh, cities in, in Europe, Madrid, London. Uh, nothing concrete, just ideas, plans. But those are markets that we definitely like. And I, I, I think the goal is to uh, start replicating with what we did in D.C. Maybe not with all the concepts, but with certain reasons, Imperfecto or the ones yeah, that fit uh, better in, in each place and, and definitely continue to grow. Uh, how many five years from now? I don't know. Maybe if we keep this, if we keep this path, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Or we <laughs> die during that path. We will be dead during the path, or we make it. But, have, yeah. have you made any? Have you made any mistakes that you've learned from scaling as quickly as you have in the last five? The last a lot. Since, what what what's the biggest mistake that you will not or you hope you hope not to repeat? <laughs> I think we committed. I mean, when I can identify, I think we committed every single time, and I think we're gonna continue to do it. Is that we always when we sign a deal, we always put a lot of pressure on opening as soon as possible. So we are always <laughs> not, uh, <laughs> so we're always running last minute, uh, like big time, uh, and 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 sometimes I think I mean there's no reason to rush this much i mean we could have waited six four months i mean nothing changed nothing changed. nothing would have changed but i think it has to also with the excitement of you know signing it's the something excitement. Get right. it's the excitement. <laughs> you get more you get more done under deadline yeah yeah uh, see i don't know what you think then no 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 that's exactly like that <laughs> it's exactly like that is he always asked me like uh, for how long you need a kitchen and i always said at least one month and he said, no, it's going to happen. That's not going to happen. It's going to be 15 days. Shit. Okay. <laughs> but let's do it. Let's do it. I mean, we, we have, we have a, a very strong team. Uh, that's why all of them, they are very reliable. So that's, that's why we have been doing this. You know, because we have the, 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 the people that care and the people, they have the knowledge and we can... Uh, rely on them, and that's why that is happening. Who who does the hiring? We do it. I mean, part of ourselves. We have a, our director of operations is very much involved in, in in hiring across the restaurants and the general managers too. But we we, we try to be on top as much as possible, especially the on the key, final stages. What's the key quality that you look for when you're bringing someone onto the team? I think. Look, I think there are many qualities, and I think. 
our challenge, not our challenge, or our, our, what we need to learn and what I personally try to do is understand what are the goals that that specific person has. You know, some people want to work in or work in the restaurant industry just because you know, they want the, the, they want the money, they do their work, they're great at what they do, but that's all they, they want. But for me, when, when I feel really excited is when I find someone that has a goal that shares what his personal or her personal goals are and, and allows me to be part of helping him how to achieve those goals. My, my, I mean, I would be very happy if one day someone had started working for us and told us on day one that at some point he wants to own his own restaurant if he finally do it, you know, that would be like my biggest uh, success somehow, you know, because at the end, I, I don't think we hire people for them to stay forever. Yep. If they don't want to, we hire people to compl- I mean, I mean, for them to help us, but also for us to help them achieve their goals. Uh, and it's, uh, at one point we're successful in that. And, and, and someone who's been working for us ends up opening something. And we had a s- small, uh, uh, and, and we feel ourselves that we, we contributed towards that. That would be amazing. And on, on the culinary on the culinary side, what do you look for? Yeah, for, for from my side, uh, I would say that one of the key factor when I hire somebody is they want my job. They have the <laughs> hungry to have my job. Yes, because that for me in a long term is the way that I can be retired. If not, I will be. <laughs> Uh, and that for me, one of the key factors and have to be a, a person very organized, meticulously. I, I don't care if they don't have uh, too much experience, but because they will have it no matter what, if they start working with us. Uh, but if they have the commitment, passion, you know, and that sense of I want his job no matter what, that's the right guy. It's amazing. So uh, every single week on Wednesday and Friday, it's a chance for you, the listener, someone that's watching the show to join us on the social audio app Clubhouse. So every Wednesday, Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time, we have a micro community of digital hospitality leaders from all over the world, um, restaurant owners, people that are sales professionals, marketing professionals, technologists. Um, and we give a social shout out this week. Social shout out goes to Scott Turner of Auden Hospitality. Scott joins us every single week from across the pond. So Scott, we appreciate you. Um, I want to give you both an opportunity. This is on entrepreneur. Give uh, one person, you each get to pick one specific person to give a shout out to um, somebody that's gone above and beyond. Uh, we'll start with you, Chef Enrique, in your group. Who who in your group? Who in the kitchen? Who in the kitchen? Yeah, one, one person. Probably Rene. Rene? Rene. Why? Because he's the most, uh, I don't know, he's like a tree, like an old fucking big tree. You know, <laughs> his roots are very attached to the soil. Uh, he's organized. He's passionate. He has been working with me probably more than 15 years. Uh, he understands me like very fast. Uh, probably it's him right now. Awesome. But on the line... There are there are on the line like three or four more that all of them they are like amazing Ooh, people. Go ahead. Uh, Nacho is one. Nacho Nacho start with me in Alma. Then uh, we he opened seven reasons with me. Um, he's like an amazing chef, very passionate. Uh, he's very creative. Um, that's another uh, Mileida. That now is she running, uh, you know, Quadrant and Saga. Uh, she has been working with me for about another six or seven years. She's a strong woman, smart. She knows numbers better than me <laughs> <laughs> because she used to be an accountant. So she understands a lot. Um, she always, she's always for me, no matter what. She is very commitment with the company and, you know, personally. Um, Hennessy's that now is uh, like the executive pastor chef of the group. She's always behind everything. She she do, uh, you know, like silent work, 
all the yeah. time with everybody in every single restaurant. Um, that's another person. Uh, I don't know. It's 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 it, it feels unfair to to. It's unfair to everyone else. <laughs> But no, well, no, it, it, it's it, it's un, it's unfair, but it's also why I love to be able to do this show is because in the hospitality business, it's always the chef, it's always the owners. We we get the chance to to tell our story, but very off, very infrequently, do we get a chance in media to celebrate all the people that make us look good. I wouldn't be able to do this yeah. show if it wasn't for my Cali barbecue media team, my media team, and my barbecue team. Like they both allow me the time to not be in my restaurants to do what I do. So thank you for doing that. Um, and how about you for you, Ezekiel? One person. You only get one. He he he, he, he is five. <laughs> I can mention a lot. No, I, I I don't know. I would say Eric Du, is our director of operations. He's been with us for almost two years now. Not the longest one in the company, but he's someone he he never says no. He he sometimes he forgets things. But he always reacts very quickly when he realizes that, that that he missed something. He's always looking for solutions. He never brings a problem to the table if he's not bringing a solution to. Uh, and he's someone who grow. He started being a, our uh, general manager or assistant general manager at the beginning. I think assistant. He started as assistant general yeah, manager assistant. at Imperfecto. Then he grew into general manager. And and last year he grew into director of operations, wow. and he's really really on top of every single aspect of every one of the restaurants. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, if you guys uh, if you want to get in touch with me, it's at Sean P Walchef S H A W N P W A L C H E F. Um, if you listen to the show, we appreciate it. Love to hear about you, your restaurant, whatever you're building. If you're a content creator in the food space, sales professional, marketing professional, um, we appreciate you listening to this show. How can people keep in touch with you, both of you, gentlemen? Email. Email. What's up? Instagram. What's, up? <laughs> what's your in, what's your inst, what's your Instagram for? So, so we'll we'll put it in the in the show notes. It's E Vasquez Jer. And I'm sure you can you can spell it. You we'll spell it out for it. we'll spell it out for for the Americans. <laughs> <laughs> and for you, Chef. No, uh, for me, it's my name Enrique Limardo. That's it. At Enrique Limardo Instagram and what's up I'm very bad in emails and you hate me but for that you're, but very very bad bad. <laughs> you're more of a text person tech text you or call would you prefer a text or a call uh probably both but Pro what's up but is not always, an email <laughs> but no, definitely you know, I'm very I'm very bad on technology and all of that so I always call through what's up and every all my friends said why you call through what's up I don't know it's the only thing that I use <laughs> <laughs> well, we we appreciate you both at Seven Reasons Group, uh, Seven Reasons DC. Uh, I'm sure. Are you guys always hiring? I'm guessing always recruiting talent. Yes. 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 Yeah. All right. Well, uh, if you're interested, go check them out. We also had uh, Tia Ivanovic uh, from Immigrant Food. She was on the show earlier. Um, so thank you for hopefully you guys can check out that episode. But we appreciate both of you gentlemen. Um, thank you so much for what you're building. I can't wait to see what you build in the years to come. If you you or anyone from your uh, your organization makes it to San Diego, please uh, come and get some some barbecue. Come enjoy. We appreciate sure. you. And, and next time you're in DC, please let us know. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to come to come see one of your restaurants. Sure. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so much. The best way that you can help us with the show is to subscribe and write a review. We love the opportunity to connect with you no matter where you are on the globe, no matter what restaurant you are running. Please send us a DM on social at Sean P. Walchef. If you are interested in toast, if you want to improve your digital hospitality, please send me a DM. I will get you in touch with a local toast representative. We appreciate you listening to this show. The best way that you can help the show is share it with a friend and we will catch you all next week or we will see you on one of the digital playgrounds that we call social media.